one sister that I met in 1972. I wasn't raised by my parents. We were all fostered out or spread out all over the place. And uh, I thought I was the only child until I got this phone call one day and she said, Irene, are you sitting down? <laughs> so I sat down and she says, I'm your sister, Colleen. I said, get out of here. I said, are you pr playing a prank? You know, I said, if this is a joke, it's not very funny. I told her, ah, she still laughs about that because I didn't believe her. And uh, I was like 21 or 20, 21. Yeah, and uh, she was 18, and she had just gotten married. I missed her wedding. And I said, well, thanks a lot. You couldn't have waited. <laughs> but, yeah, and... Uh, How did she find you? Well, you wouldn't believe it. Gossip around the town of Transcona, where I was raised, they were saying, well, there was not many of us Indian children back then, going to public school. And so she was living in West or East Kildonan, which is close to Transcona, where I lived. And all this time, we were living so close together, we never knew each other. But anyways, her, her sister that she had lived with, the parents that adopted Colleen, um, had one girl, and they, adopted Colleen and when her when their own daughter grew up and got married she went to live in Transcona and people knew people knew people right and so one day somebody said you know there's an Indian girl that looks a lot like Colleen and she goes to school in Transcona and they're saying well we know she has a sister what if it could be her you know, it was so funny the way it all happened, but it was through the grapevine, and um, she just had to try. And she said, well, my sister's name is Irene Thomas, and I'm Colleen Thomas. And so I guess she got a big push from her husband when she got married. If that's what you want to do, locate your sister, do it. It's going to bug you all your life, do it. Yeah. So she did it. And there we were. She said, I'm coming to get you right now. And her, her other sister, who was white, and I don't know how you say that, but they were a white family who, who adopted her. So. But the sister came along for the ride, or she drove Colleen, because she was so excited for both of us, right? So when I got in the car, they burst out crying and everything, and I said, well, is it really, really you? And I sort of pinched her to see. And then um, her sister leaned like this, you know, over the driving wheel. She goes, hi. She goes, oh, my God. And I looked at Colleen. And being, being that she was white, I looked at Colleen and I said, oh, is that your social worker? Oh. And she goes, You know, back then, the social workers were all, you know. But, uh, th so that's what I thought. <laughs> so what about your parents? What happened to them? Um, <clears throat> well, I finally met my mother in when I was 43 years old. And I met my father um, in 1980 or 81, around there. And uh, my mother had lived most of her life after us in Toronto. And she was coming to the treaty days from our band, like we're band members of Pegasus. So she was coming up for the summer to attend the treaty day celebration. And they said, come to Pegasus and meet your mother. And I was all mad. I said, I'm not going to meet her. Because it was, the, when I was a teenager, I, I really had a terrible life, so I blamed it all on my mother. <laughs> I said, what the heck was I born for anyway, you know? 
feeling sorry for myself and everything. When, when was the last time you'd seen her? Um, she died in 1998. I mean, the last time when you were a child. How old were you? Were you? I was three. And um, She gave you up for adoption? Or what? Yeah, she, she abandoned us, actually. And we were found by some people that on the street. And there was a whole bunch of us. Apparently, she had 11 children. And here, I thought I was the only child. <laughs> Have but you found the others, too? We found everybody, and then two of my brothers have already passed away, and so there's the rest of us left. Three live in Toronto. She had those children in Toronto with a different man. So they're all kind of step, except for me, Colleen, and Clifford. We're all from the same mom and dad. But the others aren't. Yeah. And do you see your family much? No, I don't. We never grew up together. We were, we were old when we met, and we all met at my mom's funeral. And it was like, you know, strangers. I mean, what do you say? What do you do? And we didn't live in Pecos, and we lived all our lives in the city where we weren't, we weren't even native natives, you know what I mean? We were snatched from our reserve. Yeah. And how about your adoptive family? I didn't have an adoptive family. So you weren't raised by anybody? No, I was foster adult, and which is a different story. You bounce around. And by the time I was 18, I, was, I got the boot from the Children's Aid Society, and I was no longer a ward of the court. It was a grown up. So you know how they did it? We're closing your file. You're an adult now. Here's $80. Go find a life. And it was like, I couldn't stay. I had to get a job right away. You know, it was just horrendous. They treated you just like a number. Your stats number is boom de boom and you're done. And what happened to you after that? Well, I struggled for about two months, but then I finally found a job in a hospital. I had graduated my grade 12 and I had to go to work right away. So. I didn't even have time to take the summer off after my graduation, like everybody else did. I had to pound the pavement. So I got a job and I got a place for $22 a month, like a broom closet, enough for a tiny cot and a sink. And I paid 22 bucks a month for it and got paid $1.50 an hour, my first job. And I worked 10 days straight without a break. Then you get four days off and then what, 10 more days? And I was young and I thought that was brutal. And I didn't have a life. I didn't have a boyfriend for the longest time. I didn't date. I didn't go through the whole dating process. And um, I just made a life all by myself. Very bitter at first, you know, very unhappy the way things turned out. But then when I found my sister, we got together and it was it was a very good time for me, you know. And we're still together to this day. We are sisters. It took us 25 years to get that bond where you, hey, you can wear my sweater and I'll wear yours. When I first met her, she wouldn't lend me anything. <laughs> You know, she wouldn't even trust me with anything, not even... Because when we first met, <clears throat> what happened was that she was raised by one family. And they were, I guess you would say middle class, because she never wanted for anything. You know, she got everything she wanted. She was spoiled to this day. <laughs> but she had it rough, apparently, because she was native, living in an all-white community very, you know, children are mean to you, you know, so it wasn't pleasant, but, and she had issues as well, you know, we all have issues, but uh, I found that she, she never had to, like I had my independence when I was three years old, I looked after myself, nobody else, and that's why I was so, uh, how do you say, hard on myself. I'll do it till it gets done, sort of thing. And she
she was given everything. She was, you know, everything was her. And uh, she says, it's not really like that. But, you know, on your 16th birthday, who gets a car? She got a car. You know, so I'm like, you're not saying you don't get anything. So she learned to drive at a young age. I didn't even have my license, and I was three years older than her. So I was like, you know. How, how did she learn about the family and know that you had brothers and sisters? Uh, from her, I believe. And how did she know? Oh, from her, from her mother, because her mother had to come to court to claim her, because what happened was they put a notice out to the natural parents to appear in court to either take your children or turn them over. And for a year they put out this flyer or whatever, whatever they do. And when they never showed up, or she did show up for me and Colleen, I really don't know the true story. But I guess she did show up in court and she gave us up legally to the court. And I remember crying, you know, three years old, crying for my mom. And she was able, she was allowed to hold Colleen. Colleen was like 15 months old. She was still a baby. And, um, and me, and I, I, I believe Clifford was there as well, because the three of us were born of the natural parents' thing, and they had to sign us over, whatever they do. And her mother, that wanted Colleen, was there for the child, for the one child. What about Clifford? What happened to him? Well, they tried to keep Clifford, but he was too uh, emotionally. Back then, they said emotionally disturbed, as was I. How old was he? He was two, and uh, he also had suffered from polio, and he had one leg shorter than the other, and he wet his bed till he was like eight years old. Mm. You know, issues. And um, so they finally decided they couldn't handle him. And they were always fighting, I guess. Colleen and him were always fighting. And I guess their daughter, Joy, didn't like the scenario too much. So they had to give him up, you know, to somebody else who could care better for him. So did he go into foster care then? Yeah, he went into foster care. and. We never heard from him for a long time, and then one day he bumped into us, and we bumped into him downtown, and uh, he said, well, I'm moving to Ottawa. He goes, I got a job as a DJ out there, and I'm going, so have a nice life. In the meantime, we found out he, he fled his responsibilities. He had been going with this one woman for a long time, and she really believed that she couldn't get pregnant because she had been married 10 years before that. She was older than Cliff, but she said, oh, no problem, I can't have children. And lo and behold, she gets pregnant, you know, in her 40s, I guess. And so he couldn't handle it because he didn't expect, you know, her to get pregnant and he took off. Have you seen him since? No. I haven't seen him and that's many years ago. I I can't even remember. I think maybe the late seventies because in the eighties he wasn't around. So nineteen seventy two, so shortly after a few years after nineteen seventy two, when I met Colleen I also met Cliff. So a few years later when, when did you start drinking, I mean? When I met my family, they all drank. And it was one party after another. And if I wanted to stay with my mom and our, my dad, my mom, no, because she lived in, in Toronto, but my dad, we finally met my dad in 1980 something. And we met our uncle Peter, his brother. And his uncle, I mean, his brother, had eight 
boy and one girl. So they all drank, would you believe? Nine children. They drank like fish. So we were so thrilled to death to have our immediate family that we drank. And that's what happened. I never took a drop until I met those people. I never drank before. So would you call yourself an alcoholic? Uh, uh, well, an alcoholic? Yeah, well, after that, it, it became a problem because I, I drank because I met them and I drank because I didn't meet them. And then all the bad memories, you know, come back and then you start drinking without anybody. And that became, I wanted to go to the bar every night. And my sister and I, you know, we were well brought up. Very strict people I lived with. So there was no drinking, no hanky-panky. I never even could go to a school dance. I had to beg to go anywhere, you know. And uh, the one saving grace, I guess, is I didn't get involved with drugs when I was young. So I wasn't allowed to go anywhere. <laughs> and at the time it was acid, you know, LSD and heroin and all that stuff that was available. But I never got into it. And even if my friends did, I always left. If somebody pulled out something, it was time to go. I drank, but I didn't want to. For some reason, I was too much of a chicken. I was very afraid. They used to call me a fraidy cat, you know, scared, scaredy cat, you know. But, yeah. So, I didn't get into drugs, but I drank. And I made up for not drinking. <laughs> and then when I came here, I still drank. So... You know, I had a drinking problem, but now I gave that up uh, five years now. How did Six you years, maybe. How, how about your sister? Did she drink as well? Yeah, she drank as well. She's also a diabetic, and she also has problems, but now her and her husband don't drink either. So, well, don't drink. And Colleen's trying to quit smoking. She's down to maybe two cigarettes a week. <laughs> But now she definitely quit because of the throat scare. <laughs>